Explorers, I am Jessica and today on Exploring the Local Life we're going to talk about remote work. Now this is any type of work that you do that is not on location and generally speaking if you are an RVer you're going to be doing it from your RV. And not only are you going to get my perspective but I also have a few friends that have joined me to tell us or tell you about their experiences with remote work. Hi, I'm Camille Littell from the site morethanawheeling.com. We offer travel and remote work resources and also from Remote Work School. Now, I know it's a little windy out here. My hair is everywhere, but I wanted you to see this beautiful lake behind me. We are in beautiful South Carolina and it's a great day here. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about working remotely. This is something that a lot of people are interested in, are maybe a little bit nervous about, and I have successfully navigated transitioning from being a cubicle dweller to working remotely. I actually worked in corporate America for my entire career, and I walked away in August of 2016 to live on the road, and now my husband and I work, travel, and live in an RV full time. So I have some tips for you today. And the first tip is to understand that finding remote work and leaving behind your old uh, work life is a process. It takes some time, it takes some adjustment, and one thing you want to do is always apply to a job that interests you, even if you don't think you're qualified, because chances are you have more skills than you realize. Second, if you have a job that you like now, see if you can take it remote. Maybe talk to your boss or HR and see if you can work out perhaps a temporary remote position or one day a week and slowly work up to making it remote. Third, always think about how you can transfer your skills that you have today to other types of jobs. For example, let's say you work in an office as an administrative assistant. Perhaps there's a way you can transfer those skills to other jobs like project management. Certainly a virtual assistant, uh, maybe remote managing a remote office. There's so many ways to transfer skills. Fourth, make sure you have all of your profiles updated on any job sites. So definitely keep LinkedIn up to date. If you're on monster.com or Indeed, make sure that you're up to date there. Fifth, if you want to get into freelancing, then definitely check out sites like Upwork. And um, even in uh, Facebook, you can put up a, a job profile and find remote work there as well. And lastly, good old-fashioned networking. I find most of my work by networking with people, whether in Facebook groups or online. I've been able to find contract jobs. I've been a Pinterest virtual assistant. I've built courses. I've done project management work. So I always tell people there is plenty of remote work out there. It's just a matter of finding where the jobs are. Now on my site, morethanawheelin.com, I offer lots of different resources. I have things like the 21 remote work websites. I have articles on how to find remote work. And I have articles on how to negotiate a remote work situation with your boss. So check it out. Lots of resources there. And I just want to encourage you that if you want to work remotely, you can. You just need the right information. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you on the road. Hey everyone, I'm Dan McKinsey, and this is my wife, Lindsay, and we're from followyourdetour.com. We have been living full-time in our RV, traveling, working from the road, and adventuring for a year now. And we always get asked, what do we do for work, and how do we make money on the road? So... I am a remote software consultant, and so this works out really well because, you know, I get a salary and benefits and all of those things, but this position wasn't actually supposed to be remote, and so during the interview process, I knew I wanted to be remote, so I just asked them if they would consider it, and the interviews were going really well, and so ultimately they said yes, and so I'm really fortunate to have that as a job for me. For me, it was a little bit different. I taught kindergarten for six years and I had to quit for us to hit the road. And my first step, I really had no idea what I was going to do for work, but I just started working on our travel blog, Follow Your Detour, and pouring my heart into it and writing and showing off all the skills we had, learning new skills. And um, so I've slowly been able to make money through our blog, but really our blog has been a um, a resume for me or a business card and that has led to various freelance writing positions, some film opportunities, um, I've done some virtual assistant work and 
for me, it's just been taking opportunities as they come and a little, a little of everything, mm -hmm. but it's worked. It's helped us make money. And I'm actually very close to making as much as I was as a teacher with a master's degree. I actually wrote all about it in a post on our site that I would love to share with everybody. And it gives tips for how I was able to find these positions and find the work. Um, and hopefully it's helpful for, for you. Yeah. And one other resource that we want to share with you is we just finished a seven day email course that basically tells everything that we've learned about RVing um, in the last year into seven days sent right to your inbox. And within those or within those emails, you're, we're actually going to talk about how to earn income as well as how much does it typically cost to full-time RV. So I think those resources are great. Hopefully they help you. And yeah, I know that making money and how much it costs is usually a big fear that stops people from hitting the road. So hopefully this video and the resources that we have and some of the other resources offered um, can help you overcome those fears. As most of you know, I work from the RV. I do not go into the office anymore except every what 15 months to renew a security badge, which I have to do. So for the most part, I just have my laptop, a notebook, and my security clearance to get me online to get my work done. I do have a mobile hotspot that allows me to have internet pretty much anywhere. Although sometimes I have been in places where the internet is just garbage. In which case, you will find me at the local library and or a coffee shop. Because you got to do what you got to do to get your work done. In addition to that, which I do part time, I also run Exploring the Local Life, the blog and YouTube channel and all social media along with Robert and have also picked up some freelance writing on the side as well. So basically, if you're going to be doing remote work, it's going to be pretty much anything that you can figure out, whether you can take your regular office job that you had that you went into and just converted it to a work from home, whatever that home may be, or you can start your own business or you can do work for other people doing a virtual assistance, freelance writing. Another thing that I forgot to mention regarding my internet usage. I also have a WeBoost, which helps boost cellular signal. We've done reviews on it. We have been using it for several months now, and it has made such a huge difference uh, where I may have like one bar that doesn't do anything. I can have three, four bars, depending on how great the boost is. You never really know until you try it. And I'll have a link in the description if you are interested in buying one. And also I will link to the review videos for it. But that is pretty much how I do my remote work. Is it great? Most days it's pretty good, but I do miss some of the social aspects. And of course, when I don't have internet, wherever I am, it does get a bit frustrating to either try to work the Wii Boost or having to go to another location because sometimes, you know, going to a coffee shop isn't free. You have to pay a little bit there and I'm already paying for my internet provider. So it's kind of like, you know, those things start adding up the longer I'm in a poor signal location. And sometimes I don't really have a choice on that. Like when we were campground hosting, that location had really not great internet. It didn't, I could get some of my work done, but not all of it. So I did spend a lot of time at uh, Starbucks. And also another thing is, of course, when you are working from home, whether that's in your RV or in a regular apartment or whatever dwelling, um, you know, your work life and your private life kind of like merge and get all kinds of mixed up. And for some people that's great for others, um, I think if you have children and the more people you have involved in your everyday life, um, it can get a little bit mess messy and you really have to kind of work through that balance of working, this is my work time, this is my family time, and of course you can't forget your me time. Don't do that. Um, I ran into a situation where I was working a whole lot more than I needed to and it was not good. I was having some uh, medical issues, ended up in the emergency room a couple times and uh you know i made some changes so i'm working less uh or better i guess i'm working smarter not harder so keep that in mind it's very easy to become a workaholic even when you're an rv and you're working from it hi we're sean and julie and we are chicory's travels and we have been full-time RVers for almost four years now 
And when we first started our full-time RV adventure, Sean was still in the Air Force and I was a proposal manager for a government contractor. And I was able to negotiate a remote work situation with them. I had already been working with them for several years and I was basically just going to be keeping the same job but doing it remotely. And then I was in the Air Force so we stayed put for the first two years while I finished up my Air Force career and then after my Air Force career I was able to find a position as a medical researcher doing research studies all across the United States. And just recently I have moved on from that position and I do hospital accreditation surveys all across the United States now. So it still gives us all the flexibility we need to be full-time RVers. And throughout our travels, we have talked to a lot of other people who are also uh, full-time remote employees. And we also some people who are entrepreneurs and we decided to also take a stab at that. And that's why we created Chicory's Travels. In addition, we wrote a book called Full-Time RV Finance. And it has three main topics. One is preparing for the RV lifestyle, saving money, making the RV purchase. But the second one is all about how to find remote work opportunities. And it ranges from being a full-time remote corporate employee to uh, doing work camping to being a entrepreneur and the full range of things that we interviewed people. We have lots of examples and case studies in there. And then the book also wraps up with ways to save money while full-time RVing. So if you're interested in working and full-time RVing, it is possible. And we hope to see you on the road sometime. Safe travels. Hey, so what do you think? You got some uh, different perspectives about remote working. Maybe it's something that you can do. Maybe it's not. But hopefully this video has helped you maybe uh, answer some questions you had or maybe it brought up some questions that you didn't even know you had. If that is the case, feel free to drop them below in the comments and I will get back to you. And I can also um, ask the folks that contributed to this video to also answer some questions if they have specific answers that might help you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys later. Bye.